Hello and welcome to the first revision of the 15th and 16th episode of the Oracle of Season Speedrun tutorial. Since the making of this tutorial, some new strats have been found, which I believe should be included in this tutorial. So therefore, this video will actually revise the entirety of Dungeon 8, Sword and Shield Dungeon. There is a jump, a 7 wide gap that RTA actually pitbox over that was deemed actually impossible to jump over in RTA. But actually Verlock the Jur did it in, uh, with safe data, safe data views and that sparked the interest of the community to make an actual jump uh, setup for that. So it actually made it through, there's an actual, actually a setup to make it over that jump and there for it skips the entirety of the first half of Dungeon 8, which is about a 5 minute time save if you get it first try. So yeah, let's continue on uh, and start at uh, Dungeon 8 entrance. So once you enter you want to use a seat and move over to the right side. There you want to equip your sword and your seat shooter, shooter. you want to equip uh, gill seats for that and shoot the statue which drops a key. Grab the key, use your sword to break through the pots and move along. Watch out for these wrist ropes and watch out for these keys. If they're in your way, just slash them. So in the next room you have these magnets, magnet enemies that switch around and shoot fireballs. You want to kill them all. If you have full health, you have sword beams, you can use two sword beam hits to kill them or two normal slashes, they deal the same amount of damage. Or once you enter the room, you can actually uh, use the eyes to charge up a spin slash. And since the spin slash deals double damage, you will kill them immediately. And also if you took damage, you don't have sword beams anymore, anymore so it's useful to have your sword charged and get a spin slash off. They will run away from you when you get near them, so you want to make sure you um, ch uh, chase them into a corner and then spin slash them. And using the ice momentum you can release your spin slash without losing speed, which is really handy. So there are these three center pots, they have these items under them, always a heart, a bomb and another heart. If you lost health you can grab extra if you need bombs, which uh, you probably do. You grab a few bombs, you want to get like max bombs usually, or at least a few bombs. Because we need a bomb for the jump and if you fail it a few times you're gonna run out of bombs pretty easily, so make sure you have a lot of bombs. The pots around here have random stuff in them, so it's not consistent. So here you have a room with three souls and a hard hat. Ow. So you want to kill the souls and the hard hats, casually you want to grab the ball to roll them over but you can also use a kill seat which uh, disappears him and drops a key. So once you shot your kill seat you can use the cape. With the cape you have a bit more momentum, um, preservation I guess, you can control your movement a little bit better because in the air you are not walking on ice, while well, on the ice you are actually walking on ice. So you can jump to gain speed and move along. So if you took a little bit of damage, pro probably more than a heart I'd say, you can use your cape and boomerang these uh, sparks that are stuck to the walls. They always drop a fairy, so if you need health, they are there. So yeah, moving along, you have your cape and sword. I'd like to kill both these souls, because if you spawn them they can be in your way later when you want to set up your uh, jump later. Okay, and normally the speedrun route just goes through that staircase, but we are, uh, we are actually gonna stick, skip that. So yeah, in the room next here, this is the gap, a 7 wide gap that you want to jump over, which is really tight. Because with the cape and seeds you can just make it over uh, 6 gaps, but if you uh, actually manipulate your subpixel correctly and get a boost from a bomb, you can actually barely make it to the other side. So yeah, let me actually make a save state for that. So first off, I'm gonna talk a little bit about subpixels, because they are important for this. If you move diagonally, you will not actually move one pixel diagonally every frame. 
because there is no diagonal pixel there's only left and up pixels so as you can see sometimes you move one pixel left sometimes you move one pixel up left sometimes you move one pixel up and to decide on that um, the game uses sub pixels so once you gain enough sub pixels you actually move an extra pixel where you wouldn't have moved one normally which uh, controls diagonal diagonal movement and stuff so yeah you want to control that to make it across this pit. So it ha it so happens to be that if you fall into a pit, your sub pixels get reset because you get spawned in the same position um, that you entered, and it doesn't uh, take into account your sub pixels, only your actual pixels. So once you fall into into the pit, there are two uh, setups you can do to get to the right sub pixel in the next screen. So first off is um, the setup I usually use, which is I you hold up, and then once I touch the wall, I hold left and release it into the transition, which lets you slide a little bit out of the transition and then come to a full stop. So this is what I usually use. It's um, it has an inconsistency because sometimes because of the way ice physics move, uh, ice physics work. You sometimes have a bit more speeds leaving the previous screen and it causes you to slide further. Which I believe fucks up everything. But if that happens, you go back to the previous screen and uh, reset by falling into the pit again. Hold up, up left. Let's see if I can actually get it. Because sometimes you will slide a little bit further. And you would actually get past this corner and move a little bit diagonally. Which uh, moving diagonal will change your subpixel, so it will probably put you on a different subpixel set, which does not work. So, I don't think I can actually show it. It's about a 1 in 6 chance, I believe, because every 6 frames you get a speed up since your first. Uh, since the first movement you do on ice, so if I press up, this is when the frame count starts. So, it's, it's, it's pretty rare. And if it happens, you can just walk back straight away. So yeah, I usually don't worry too much about it. If it happens, it happens and then you go back. So, let me actually see if I move a little bit further and then I can show it. Apparently it doesn't even work over here. But yeah, you would slide further along this corner and move up a little bit. That's when you know you missed it. It's pretty easy to spot. So yeah. So yeah. So you walk into the pit, hold up, up left. And that's the long slide, <laughs> just after I explained it. If you get that, you move back into the pit again and try again, like that. So from here on out, you don't want to do any more diagonal movement because that is going to change your sub pixels. And you want to set up on uh, this uh, pixel uh, perfectly. You want to look at uh, I like to look at this band over here, this which is the third uh, band from the left, you have the first band over here which is slightly off the zoomed in picture, second band and the third uh, band, it's uh, the second band from below which, uh, which you can actually see, this is the first one and this is the second one. Um, what is especially important is your horizontal position, so you want to be one pixel away from the the out outermost uh, pixels of the edge, so you want to have this, these pixels in between you and uh, this, these darker pixels. You can be a little bit uh, higher, like that, or a little bit lower. I think this one, uh, this one might work, but it's tricky, I guess. This one definitely also works, I believe. So you can use this one also. There's a little bit of leniency you can use. This one also works. So yeah, you want to focus on your horizontal position. Let's put it at um, this position, for example. So from here on out, you want to you have the right position, and um, from here on out, you can do the jump. So let me actually look, uh, talk you through the other method, which is 100% consistent. 
you fall into the pits, you wait until you spawn. You, you don't have to stop splashing, I believe, but you want to wait until you spawn. Because ice physics work when you hold, when you first press the button. So once you spawn, you hold left, walk straight off, and the ice. This actually puts you at, at the wrong uh, subpixel, so in order to get to the correct subpixels, you want to use uh, swords clanks on the wall. So if you hold out your sword and press down on the wall, you will clank on it. And if you move diagonally one uh, pixel, you change your subpixels a little bit because it counts as diagonal movement. And you want to get two of those. So you can look at the screen. If the screen moves, you you want to get two of those movements and then you are done, you have the correct subpixel. And from here on out, and before that, when entering this room, you do not want to move diagonally again. I like to use the swords to line up a little bit, because it's, I like this position, it's easy to kind of to, uh, remember. Just looking at those, um, I'm actually zooming in again, just looking at that band, and you have that one pixel border between you and that band, which is really convenient. So from this position on, you want to equip seeds and bombs. I like to equip seeds on B because it's easier for me to handle. Let me make a save state. And you want to use your seeds and pick up a bomb. And while you're picking up a bomb, you can switch the cape. I like to do it uh, here because it's, it's easier. And you want to run to the right and throw your bomb into the room. Once you are a little bit further into the room, do not throw it too early, because otherwise you will not get a good damage boost from the bomb. So use a seed, pick up the bomb, switch around, throw the bomb, and open the save and quit menu right afterwards. We are going to use the save and quit menu to actually buffer to the correct position. So you want to get to a, a, a pixel perfect position, and with save and quit menus you can actually tell a little bit um, uh, in which position you are and it should help um, get the perfect position that you want and I think I actually got it here so let me actually check with frame advance to confirm that yep I actually got the position so let me actually zoom in on that here it is this is the position you want link to be in um, take a look at this position you have a few um, yeah indications that you are on the right position, you can look at Link's foot. It lines up perfectly with the edge of um, the pits, so that's usually a good indicator that you are on the on the correct pixel. Sometimes there is a bit of dust from the Pegasus seed running covering this specific foot pixels, so it can be tough to tell that. Um, I usually use the pixel on Link's head. So you have these light colored pixels, these six ones, three on the top, three on the bottom. And I, they want to, you want to have one pixel over the edge of the pit. So as you can see, it's one pixel over. That's the uh, pixel position that you want to be in when you open the save and quit menu. So once you see that you are in that position, you, uh, you are ready to buffer a, a jump out of the save and quit menu. So, here's the save quit. You want to buffer the jump and do not actually hold it all the way because then you open your cape immediately and you will not actually make it to the other side. So, you open the, um, you close your save and quit menu and you buffer your jump out and release it and start buffering your save and quit menu again. Because you want to buffer to a second um, time, a second frame, and that is, um, indicated by the bomb explosion. I believe it's actually also on this zoom in. So if you look at the bomb, the bomb will explode slowly and you want to wait until the bomb actually explodes to a certain um, pattern, I guess, which is the pattern after this one. Now you see a little bit of um, clouds. Let me actually zoom out. You have these clouds, they will expand until you see this one, where it's actually an explosion. And once you see this one, you buffer your jump again out of um, the saving grid menu to open your cape. 
So there are two uh, frames this actually works on. It's the first frame, this explosion appears, and the second one. So it's a little bit less um, tight, I guess, but you only have one shot because if you miss it, you fall into the pit. So, yeah. Let me actually, you keep holding, uh, whoa, that was, I was not, exp I thought I was already in the air. So once you reach that um, uh, pixel, let me actually do it from the start. See if I can get it again. That's one pixel over, I believe. You, uh, if you miss it, let me actually talk to that about uh, talk about that one because there's a different setup you can do if you miss the jump. Let me actually try to get it because oops, that's the wrong menu. I think that's the pixel. So yeah, let me actually show you. I think I was late here. So if you miss it, you want to hold down and left after you fall into the pit. And walk into this corner and release your diagonal inputs. This actually puts you in the correct in the correct uh, sub-pixel region to actually make the jump 80% of the time. So if you fall into the pit with your seats on, you want to have seats for the entirety of you holding down left. Because if you don't have seats, you will get different sub-pixels and you won't actually be able to make the jump. So, assume that you miss it, either by like um, walking to the pit or missing the second jump or jumping too early, for example, if I jump too early like that. The bomb actually explodes in my face, so I don't get a damage boost. You want to hold down left and continue until you hit the wall and wait until your seat runs out. You have to actually wait for that. And then once it runs out, you can go back into your position. You can be one pixel too high sometimes, it's, it's fine. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. And you start over again. Use a seat, grab a bomb and try again. It's, I think it is one pixel further. Well, either way, once you get to the pixel, you again save and quit menu and you buffer a jump out, release your jump button and wait until you see the explosion open up and jump to the other side. So there are these mold ups around here, they can be in your way and if you are unfortunate, they can knock you back into the pit, which is bad. So once you land, you usually want to do a jump to make sure you avoid um, all the mold arms running around here. If you feel unsafe or in case you aren't, uh, uh, how do you say it? I don't, I forgot the word for it. If you don't, if you feel confident that you don't die, you can skip the button. Otherwise, just walk over the button and spawn the bridge. So in case that you die, you can just walk over, which is really nice. So from here on out, you continue on. If you enter this room, use an extra seat or use it when it runs out because here you have another big jump. You don't need a bomb jump for this. It's a six gap jump uh, vertical. So the thing about that jump, let me actually get back to that. I forgot to make a save state. I'm dumb. So here is the frame. Hit the button and move along. So once the seed runs out, let me actually make a save stick here. You can use another one and get ready for this jump. So what you want to aim for is you want, I usually jump on this borderline stupid ropes. So they are out of the way for a bit. You want to jump on this divider line. Let me actually kill them because they are really, really, really annoying. There we go. So you want to be on this divider line. It's easier to, um, jump to the other side when you are between pits because it allows you to do a little bit of RTA pit walking I suppose if you want to call it because if you do it right in the center you will fall straight into the pits well if you jump on the edges you will walk a little bit wow I missed the jump oops if you walk on the edges you will walk a little bit across the pits like that which actually makes it easier way easier so make sure you actually do that it's really consistent. So yeah, use your seat when it runs out. Watch out for the keys. If you feel like they are gonna be in your way, just try to get them out and jump across. 
I jumped really early there and as you can see I still made it, so it's really easy. If you don't want to do this jump, there's a switch there. Just grab your boomerang and hit the switch to spawn the bridge. Easy, yep. So in this next room you usually still have your seat from the jump, so you can um, let me actually do that. Mummies deal one art of damage, so it's really scary. So if you have your seat, you can make this jump to the other side. And from here on out, you want to equip your boomerang and usually the flute. Because you have these pulse voices, they are allergic <laughs> to music. So they kill them immediately. And you can use your boomerang to hit three other keys. So sometimes they are off the screen. You want to just ice hole him. You want to just... If you can't see him, just try to go around the screen. And if you can take a bit of a look on how the screen looks like, you have these spots in the middle, and then just some room to the right and left of it and above. So I try to use my boomerang and go around these spots. Oh, damn it. Go around these spots and try to hit something. So yeah, once you kill everything, the door opens on the left side, which is the door that you want. Let me do this equip again. So once you open it, you want to equip bombs and seeds. If you lost a lot of health, you can also equip boomerang and seeds for uh, a fairy later. But usually you won't need it. But if you feel unsafe, of course, grab the fairy. So here you have sparks again. If you need a fairy, you have your bombs, uh, your boomerang, Emily, I mean. And you can grab a fairy. So once you come in here, you grab a bomb. And you want to blow up the middle piece between the wall and um, the owl. Which unlocks a secret uh, entrance. So you can just throw it and move along. This will actually um, start the ghost Armos. He will walk to a certain pattern. You want to follow him at uh, the exact same spots that he walks in. That's actually one of the good patterns, he only walks right once, left once, and then back to the spot. He always ends up in the same spot, but his patterns are different most of the time. I'm actually getting the same pattern. So there are like uh, four different patterns, I usually remember them. Uh, from their starting pattern, which is they start off straight and do a loop de loop that's this one, which it, it goes five up, left, down two, right two, up, and then all the way to the wall. And then there is the one, of course, where it, which you saw at the start, which is that one. And there's also one where it starts doing a zigzag, I believe, at the start. I don't remember them exactly, but it should be easy. Just look at the Armos. Oh, this one, I believe, maybe. It should be easy. Just watch at the Armos to see what he does. And at the end, there are two different patterns as well. As you saw, he came up on the left side. They all will all end up going up on the left side. You have the pattern where he goes straight along the wall into the spot that he ends up in. You have the one where he does a little bit of a zigzag before he gets there. Let me actually kill this one because before it hurts me. And you have... Kill it, kill it. And you have one where it just goes around. It goes right one earlier and goes around it. So those are like the different patterns that you get. So you usually have this equip. You come in. You get a pattern, this is the zigzag I was talking about. You just zigzag once, and then go straight up. And usually it hooks around, yeah. You can use a seat here if you want. If you are comfortable with your movements, I usually don't really do it. Once you get the key, you can use a seat. If you have extra seats from the jump left over, usually you do. And grab one of these ice blocks. You want to bring it down first. These ice blocks, um, you can throw into that those pits in the floor, and they actually freeze lava. This is actually a floor down below. So if you took the stairs to the left here, you would end up down there. So the entirety of the bottom floor is actually lava, as you can see. This one froze now, but we don't want to go down there yet. You want to go back up. And grab another one, because there are four holes that can be uh, used to freeze the lava. We are actually only going to use um, three. We're going to skip that one on the right there. 
and we're gonna use this one. Watch out for this wish rope. He's a dick. Open the key block, grab the block, and throw it down there. Which will freeze the top left portion of um, the lava floor below. You can't really speed up these cutscenes, so you just have to wait for that. So once you've done that, go down here, open the key door, and go straight to the right. Go down this staircase, use the seats here. Especially this one, if you don't have any seats left, this is going to be really slow, so make sure you have a seat left for this one. Grab the key, go around down here, and go to this staircase. So if you're out of seats here, you can actually switch out to your swords and kill these along the way, so they aren't in your way later. Because they can be in your way when you want to throw your ice rock in this hole. Usually I want to do a spin slash and kill one of them or maybe two. But if you still have seats like I do, just keep them equipped with your bracelets. You go up, depending on how many seats you have left, you can use a few extra. You only need um, one more seat after this, so use all that you have. Especially on this section, it's really nice to have a seat to run around that hole. So grab another ice block and go back to that hole that you came up with. Now the minecarts are in the correct position, you couldn't actually go there first because the minecart was on the other side. Now it's on this side, so you can actually go into the minecart. And if you killed um, all these um, Stealthos with swords, they are not in your way anymore. If they are, you have to dodge them a little bit. So you can throw it and use a, a, a seed to move a little bit faster if you need to. Don't get hit because if you get hit, you throw your rock away, which is annoying. But yeah, throw it in and move down. So yeah, this freezes up the last um, lava that we need to get to the boss. So yeah, you go down here. If you've used a lot of bombs and the boss voice didn't actually drop a bomb that you could grab, you can uh, actually opt to grab this chest on the left side. Use a seat here, by the way, this is your last seat that you need. And you get 10 bombs, which is really nice, because you need at least 5 bombs. And if you have less than 8, then I would worry, so make sure you have more than 7. 8, 9 or 10 is usually enough. So yeah, once you grab the bombs, or not, you can go up here, go to the left, and go around. If you run out and you have an extra seat, why not use it? and equip your sword and cape, because that's what you're gonna use for um, the mini boss, the boss fight. <laughs> I said mini boss, but we skipped the mini boss. So these four pots have uh, fixed Pegasus seats on the, on the outsides and hearts on the insides. And actually the pots to the right, I believe, actually respawn if you leave and exit the screen, so you can farm on that. In terms of Pegasus Seeds, you only need one Pegasus Seed drop. I usually take two because why not, I just pop all four of the pots and leave. And if you're low on health, just go and leave the screen a few times and grab these extra hearts if you need them. So yeah, up next is uh, Medusa, Medusa Hat. Medusa Hat is um, the final boss, I guess, of the 8th dungeon. And you want to slash her or it, whatever you want to call it. So she has two attack patterns. The first one is where she starts off in the center of the room and she spins these. Pet oh wow, that. What? Never mind. She spins off uh, balls with, uh, which petrify you if they hit you. So if you. Uh, that's why you have the cape, so you can jump over them. And after that she starts spinning around you and shoots energy balls. So if you get her stuck in top, on top of there, you can actually get her easily so she stops spinning. But you want to jump over that. The other attack is that she starts in one of the corners and uses a um, laser beam across the room to try and hit you. You can jump over the laser or you can just take the damage and try to get an extra hit in. So this is the petrification, you can't uh, actually do much while in there. 
so just wait and slash her or it. So the way to deal with it is you start off with your spin slash out. You can't actually hit Medusa until she moves, so make sure you wait a little bit and take a little bit of damage there. So you want to slash, slash, slash. Usually you want to get one spin slash and five hits off when she spawns in the middle. And um, the pattern is fixed in a way that if she does a laser beam she will always spawn back into the center. But after like the spinning phase, sometimes she will just spawn into the center again. So that's something you can take into account. Ow. But yeah, let me actually do it right this time. So you start off with charging your sword and stand next to her. Wait until she starts moving and hit her. And sometimes you get an extra bonus, I guess. I like to move left a little bit there. So yeah, slash, jump, slash, slash. Let me actually dodge it. So spin, slash, jump, slash, slash. That's what you usually want to do to get um, through the, the the phase where she spawns in the, to, in the center. So yeah, wait for her to spawn and move and spin slash. If you are fast enough you can actually get an extra hit off after you get uh, hit by the laser. And if you can you get stuck to the wall again, please. actually do your laser attack again please laser I said laser <laughs> let me actually do it from the safe state because my RNG is set from there so yeah you get you can actually get a spin slash and if you like jump you get enough movement to get back to the right and hit her before she fades away to get an extra hit off and if I can actually show that, that would be nice. Um, bad. But whatever, you don't need it, it's um, just one hit. Usually you get five hits on every time she spawns into the middle, so that should be fine. But yeah, you can try it. It's nice, and if you don't get it, don't worry. Okay, spin slash. That was close. Like that. Sometimes you slash too fast and you won't actually make it. And I don't actually remember how many hits she takes, but if you just count the video, it should help. Spin slashes count for two, normal slashes count for one. So, yeah. Really simple boss fights until you screw up and she starts spinning around your room. And then hell breaks loose. So let's say I, I miss it or I get hit by the petrification boss. Sometimes she gets stuck up there against the wall, which is really convenient. Then you can just walk straight up and hit her. So say I try to miss her and try that again. Assume I actually make it and she starts spinning. Just wait in the middle. She'll get stuck on the wall and you can jump in for a slash and she'll disappear. So yeah. I don't think there's actually that much more to tell you about Medusa Head. So yeah, here we have um, the heart container of uh, Medusa Head of Dungeon 8. You can grab it if you want extra health for Anox, you can also just leave it. Don't worry too much about having not enough health, as long as you have like um, 3 hearts or more. One of the fairies outside in the, the mini temple outside have uh, will give you full health again for Anox, but uh, if you're starting out, grab it. Refills your heart, you don't have to worry about any of the fairies outside. And just move up uh, and grab the Essence. Essence of Seasons, I believe this one is. So yeah, that's the new Dungeon 8 with the stupid jump, I guess. How I call it, dumb jump. It's really tricky, it saves 5 minutes. If you get it first try in like a new if you first learn the run, it's gonna save you a ton of time because Dungeon 8 is actually pretty hard. 
especially when you're new you're not gonna make it alive most of the time you need to practice that so this is actually a really convenient uh, trick to start learning early so you don't have to do the tough parts I'll keep the old video up if you need if you want to know about it it does not use HSS skip it's um, you have to do a lot of uh, dumb jumps I guess also which do not require bomb jumps so that's actually good but you guys some practice including the boss the mini boss fight for Polar is tricky and there's also an underground ice section that you actually skip with this so I advise to actually try to learn this jump when you are starting out so yeah thank you for watching and hope to see you at the next video